So today I'll be reading to you a few things, starting with this short story by Karen Brusanon Gautier called Post Crumbs. Wait, so was I on the vampire? Doesn't matter. Do that one first, it's fine. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> You're there now, you found the page. <laughs> well. <laughs> Location. Porch. I listen for a loud clack from the back door of my grandpa's house. I'm rewarded with a resounding slam because I've left open the front parlour window. It makes this amazing air vacuum, so grandpa's screen door backs her to close and open and another close. Don't slam the door, he yells at me, thinking I've just come inside. We've now comfortably deposited us, excuse me. <laughs> We've now comfortably deposited ourselves in the plastic chairs on the front porch. It's raining this morning and it's the kind of rain shower which brings fat worms slithering onto the cement sidewalk. I'll be picking them up later. Where does rain come from? I ask him. He looks stiffly at me and tells me it's God's crying. So I ask him, was it something I've done? You slammed the damn door, is his answer. He'll usually sit here, feeding peanuts to squirrels or rolling cigarettes. He's always got his old police scanner at his feet, turned on and tuned into the station he once worked for. I asked him why he likes it here on the porch, killing time. He just shrugs. The scanner buzzes to life, broadcasting some new emergency. At least someone is up to no good. I decide to go pick worms. Location. Swing. We walk down to the park at the end of our street because it has stopped raining. I like to swing and kick sand. I kick sand to see just how far I can make it spray. It disperses and fans out like pigeon feet from clenched fists. Grandpa gives me pushes on the swing, but never those underdogs. He tells me he's too old to run under my butt. His hands are meaty, intimidating even, taking up the whole small space of my back. I hope my hands will mature one day and get large like his. He nicknamed, he nicknamed them Warhounds. I bet Grandpa can hold a lot of birds, eat, but in his day, he used them for throwing grenades and later wielding a billy club. I hope there's still some fight left in him. I check on him mid-swing while arching my back and stretching out my legs. I spot him upside down on my upswing, taking a drag of one of his newly rolled cigarettes. This morning, on the porch, he lets me lick the rolling papers to seal the tobacco. He looks a bit lost. I find myself drifting backwards into a fog of his exhaled smoke. I guess he used to do this kind of thing with my dad, but since the porch police scanner made its big announcement, it's just the two of us. I could be wrong about him being lost. Maybe he's trying to remember my dad and grandma as they drove away together. I'm swinging to forget. Location. Table. I wonder about a grown man who's got a lace cloth on his kitchen table. He traps toast crumbs and I really hate cleaning the damn things. War hands seem out of their elements, stroking and smoothing a big lace doily. They look so brawny and it looks too delicate to withstand such a touch. He says his wife liked lace and he loved her. So the doily cloth stays. By noon, he's seated at the table, working on his crossword puzzle while I go over my homework. Steam from his hot tea distracts me, and the more cigarette smoke hypnotically twirls before disappearing towards the ceiling. If he does speak to me, it's while I'm sharpening our lead pencils, telling me to get the lead out. Alphabet letters become confined in crossword, crossword squares like crumbs get trapped in lace. Somehow, we all get stuck in a rut. I stare down at my grandma's cloth and set myself to task, pecking away at the imprisoned toast crumbs and fresh pencil shavings and snared within its ornamental leaf. I have a memory of her kissing my dad on the cheek as he's breathed into this house and with me in tow for every Sunday lunch. 
the aroma of roasted turkey permeated the house, teasing my senses with all our hard work. This makes me consider closing the front parlour window once in a while, to stop giving God a reason to cry. I think she'd like that.